Hello everyone, it is Joe here from Omnipoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon, back with another Worlds deck analysis. Today it's going to be Mega Rayquaza. It is a very powerful archetype, as we all know, known for getting big one-hit knockouts with the Emerald Break attack by filling your bench with Skyfield. This archetype may have its last hurrah at the World Championships because it seemingly has good matchups against some of the big contenders, Gardevoir, Volcanion, and even most Decidueye variants, even with Vileplume, I believe the matchup has been improved thanks to the likes of Guzma being added to the deck. So it seems to be able to simply just run through a lot of different archetypes. So let's look at it and why we've made these decisions. So first of all, a 3-3 line of the Mega Rayquaza. This one, not much to note, it can do 60 damage for a single energy. So bear in mind, if you're not able to Wombo Combo, you can still put something in a bit easier range. So you don't have to go crazy with your bench in future turns. Uh, not too much to note here, but it's all about the Mega as our main and pretty much only attacker in the deck outside of things like Tapu Lele um, and I guess Magina. We can uh, use Emerald Break for three colorless energy, dealing 30 times the number of our benched Pokemon. And as you know, with Skyfield, we can cheat the system, go from a five bench to an eight and then deal uh, 240 damage as our maximum. He does have the awesome uh, Ancient Trait Delta Evolution. Uh, when you uh, uh, you can evolve on the first turn, which is crazy good. Uh, as soon as you put down your Ray, you can find a Spirit Link and Mega up. And that is how we are able to get, on the second turn, uh, one-hit knockouts, even with the evolution in there. 220 as well is very bulky. It's an awkward number for a lot of things to hit. Uh, so it is a difficult guy to take down, even when he is rolling. So typically the opponent has to either go for like stall approaches or take easier prizes on things like Shaman's Hoopers and Dragonites that will be on the bench because it's rare that they can one hit Kyo Rayquaza um, in uh, many circumstances. So, very, very powerful, dangerous card. Let's look at some of the support. We are playing two Hooper EX with a Scoundrel Ring ability. It is a fantastic card that we want to see very early in the game because we're able to use his ability to search out three uh, Pokemon EX other than Hooper. Oftentimes, we will be finding the Rayquaza pieces as well as Shaman EX to help us draw cards. That's why we're playing four in here, because we are a big combo deck. We need to find ourselves a Ray, a Spirit Link, a Mega, an Energy to be discarded, uh, and also a Mega Turbo, as well as a Double Colorless Energy. So six things we need to hit, all in order to get that attack going. That means we need to cycle a lot through our deck, and Shaman is going to be the main means of doing so. Uh, we are also able to Sky Return as well, if we, again, can't hit the combo, or if we happen to start him or something and can't move him out of the active, we can just jump into the hand and again deal that little bit of chip damage that can sometimes be the difference. So, uh, uh, Shaman, very useful card. It is a four of because we just want to cycle as aggressively as possible. A couple more two ofs. We are playing two Tapu Lele GX as well. We know that this card is very good for consistency purposes. We have the Wonder Tag ability allowing us to uh, search our deck for a supporter when we bench it. Unfortunately, we can't find it with Hooper because it's only uh, EX Pokemon, but Dragonite can find it because it's any basics. So bear that in mind. Dragonite's pull-up ability is able to activate on Lele, which is brilliant. Lele itself, obviously fantastic. You can see we play nothing higher than a two count of any single supporter. So we need to access the right ones for the right situations. Oftentimes, Mallow is the star player in this deck as a draw supporter because we combo it with the likes of Unknown and uh, Shaman EX. So... Uh, being able to dig out the perfect card. Sometimes the Skylar is the final piece of the puzzle. If you just need to get like an Ultra Ball to get rid of one of your energies to activate Mega Turbo, something like that. Um, Lele is going to help us out in order to get those things. Then we have, as I just mentioned, the two Dragonite EX with the amazing pull-up ability. When you play this Pokemon from your hand onto your bench, you may put two basic Pokemon from your discard pile into your hand. This is excellent synergy with the Rayquaza archetype. Whenever you're Skyfield is bounced, we go down to a 5 Pokemon bench, so we can simply use Dragonite uh, once we've got Skyfield back into play to recover some of the things we earlier discarded when our stadium was bounced, and then we're able to once again fill the amount of Pokemon we need on the bench to deal massive damage with Rayquaza. It also is obviously helpful for helping us draw more cards, because when Skyfield is bounced, typically we are putting Shamans, Leles, Hoopers, all these sorts of things into the discard pile. Uh, Unknown also get themselves into the discard pile because of its own ability and that is also potentially an extra card here or there which Dragonite can uh, literally pull up and then we can spam once again so 
uh, really the reload from this deck comes via the Dragonite. You can see we're not playing Rescue Stretcher in the deck. Uh, that is because it's an item that we don't really like and uh, we don't want to play items because Garbodor's around and we believe that um, we can just uh, use abilities to get us through most of the time. Uh, simply because there's a lot less parallel in the format as well. Um, it's not that difficult to reload. You don't always need to have a Dragonite in order to reload your bench because we are playing um, 20 basic Pokemon in here, three uh, evolved Pokemon, the Rayquazas, everything else is basics. So we shouldn't have a problem filling our bench. So just the two is gonna be enough. We don't need support from Rescue Stretcher, I don't feel. The three count of uh, Unknown has been a new addition or a recent addition, I should say. Uh, as soon as Mallow was released in Guardians Rising, people figured out that because the deck is so combo focused, you can actually dig for the specific cards in the combo in order to get there. So using Unown's Farewell Letter, not only does he sit on the bench for 30 damage when you need him to be, you can also use him to add additional cards for you uh, in the early turn cycle. And of course it combos with Mallow amazingly because we are able to draw one and Mallow puts or stacks the deck to the top two. So we can use a few Unown to get us there. And also it can uh, remove itself from the bench. One of the best things is you have an eight bench, but all of our draw engine is ability focused. You can see our supporter line is very low. So in order to cycle again, to start finding, you know, your next Rayquaza, your next double colorless energy, sometimes you will have to sacrifice Unown, use its ability so that we can free up more space for the likes of Dragonites, Shamans, Leles to keep cycling in the deck. So he fills a very cool role as the three counts. We are then playing one Magina EX. You notice we play Metal Energy in the deck. Uh, Magina is in here for two reasons. First of all, Mystic Heart is excellent at protecting our Rayquaza, preventing all effects of your opponent's attacks except damage done to each of your Pokemon that has any Metal Energy attached. Means we can't be a Field Blower devolved. Well, they can Field Blower the tool, but they can't devolve our Mega Rayquaza, which is very good. Um, additionally, we won't be worried about uh, Righteous Edge from Drampers or Stardusts from Jirachis or Confusion from Espeon uh, GX. So McGinnis is very good at protecting the Rayquaza from being uh, sort of stalled or all these awkward things we just don't have to worry about. It's basically damage v damage and when we level that playing field, Ray is pretty good because its damage output is crazy high. So uh, McGinnis has a great ability but it has a second purpose in this deck because it is a metal type that can use the attack Soul Blaster for a metal double colorless to deal 120. Doesn't sound spectacular, but we do know that Mega, uh, not Mega, sorry, um, Gardevoir GX is a popular archetype in the format. We shouldn't have too much issue getting one hit heroes with Rayquaza, but some sneaky Gardevoir players are playing Pseudo Wudo in their lists. So having Magina to also be able to one hit KO is going to be a pretty cool thing for you. So they can tech against you, but you've already got something else that can one hit KO and we can recover it with uh, Dragonite. Maybe we use Magina to KO um, one Guardi, then we use Ray to KO Pseudo Wudo, then we can like continue with Ray's to uh, finish out the game. But Magina nonetheless can one shot a Guardi. So bear this in mind, he is pretty cool. Uh, the other one I was we're playing, one pseudo wudo. This also has a cool ability. You can see so many, like all of our cards are ability focused, basically. Um, pseudo wudo with the nice little roadblock. Your opponent can't have more than four benched Pokemon. If they have five, they have to discard until they have four. And um, yeah, pretty cool. If there's more than one effect changing the number of benched, use the smallest number. So if there was a parallel city being played over a pseudo wudo, the opponent would then put themselves down to three rather than the four. So just bear that in mind. But Pseudo Wudo blocking the opponent down to four. This is awkward for a few archetypes. Things like uh, Volcanion and Decidueye. Well, Volk needs lots of Volcanion in order to steam up, in order to hit 220. So stopping them with bench spaces is going to be awkward. Also hurts them like putting down Starmie and such. So that is pretty cool. Uh, Decidueye, it's a big combo deck. They often need lots of Shaman EX draw and Tapu Leles uh, to build up their turn one item lock. So having Pseudo Wudo on the board can maybe prevent them from doing that. And even if they are able to get the combo, they don't have many bench spaces to fit multiple Decidueyes in play. So really they'll just have like one Decidueye, one Vile Plume, and then just the Shamans and the Leles. So we're much less intimidated at that point. So Pseudo Wudo, excellent for that reason. Additionally, there's mirror matches. So you can also roadblock them. So they are limited to 120, whereas we can do the full uh, amount so we can one hit their rays and they can't unless they hex and fill their board 
and because oftentimes they need abilities to fill their board, it's going to be awkward for them to do so. Also, it's just a general thing that when you limit your opponent's bench to four, it's going to be much difficult for them to be able to squeeze in a pseudo Wudu on their side of the board. pseudo Wudu, of course, one of the most awkward things for a Rayquaza player, uh, because we want to have as many bench slots as possible. Some people are tacking in one pseudo Wudu in the lists, hoping to beat Ray. But if you go for Roadblock, then maybe they don't have enough space in order to fulfill their own strategy and have a pseudo Wudu on the bench. So it's sort of like an anti pseudo Wudu thing going on, which is pretty cool. So it helps certain matchups, but in general, it can also be just a nice bench sitter. The final, no, no, not the final. We have two more cards. One is going to be Tapu Koko. Tapu Koko is a free retreater, so it does serve the purpose of being the best lead in the deck. I'm playing this over Professor Kakui, which I have seen in a few lists, because it again serves multiple purposes, whereas Kakui can only ramp you up that a little bit more. It can get you to the 250 benchmark, which is good for uh, the likes of Metagross. Tapu Koko can do the same thing with an early flying flip or a flying flip at any point, really. Um, especially with Hex Maniac, you have turns to weave this in. Um, you can deal this 20 and then the Metagrosses are set up. Bear in mind, they do play Max Potions often, so it's not as perfect as Kukui. But uh, Tapu Koko serves the extra bonus of um, being able to counter Gyarados as well. Gyarados is something that in the recent ARG tournament did impress. It made a few slots in the top 16. Uh, so Kukui obviously can't help you against Gyarados, but Tapu Koko can. So he's a recyclable card in this deck as well because we play two Dragonites. So hopefully, fingers crossed, we can just spam Coco against a Gyarados. And now, finally, Rayquaza has an out to that archetype. Whereas previously, we pretty much wouldn't and the Kukui wouldn't help in that regard. So the one slot, I prefer this to Kukui. It's also just a bench Pokemon that we really love having on the bench, really, because it's free retreat and a non-EX. So uh, Coco serves many purposes. And finally... Uh, we do have the Orangaru with the Instructability. Once during a turn, you may draw until you have three in your hand. Rayquaza is a hyper-aggressive deck. And um, basically, many times we will be... Um, sort of, the game will be stolen away from us after going many prizes ahead. The opponent will end us into a dead hand. Slowly deal with our Rayquaza, uh, Rayquaza and then snowball off of that. But with Orangaru, we are able to instruct our hand back up to three, which gives us the magic number in order to find ourselves Ultra Ball, which then lets us continue in the matchup, or it gets us into VS Seekers or Energies. These last outs that we need to win the game, Orangaru can be our guy. Again, another great bench sitter. So you can see we have a full bench of eight most times, and we're using lots of different specific cards to improve matchups because things just chilling on the bench is perfect for Rayquaza. Onto the items, very, very simple. Uh, three versus Seeker, we don't feel like four is super necessary and we're trying to limit our item usage because Garbodor is still around. Uh, three Mega Turbo, obviously important for getting the combo off with Rayquaza, allowing us to get an energy from the discard pile and put it onto one of our Megas. Amazing acceleration for uh, Ray, of course. And for Ultra Ball, the king of the deck, really, you always want to see this card because it's what the combo is basically starts with also it's amazing at discarding basic energy for those turbos as well uh, then we have the three rayquaza spiralink the downside of having to play megas is that you require these in order to evolve without your turn ending so these are relevant for certain bear in mind because of our ancient trait if we are going first we can't attack anyway it is optimal for you to not put a spirit link on the rayquaza that you will end your turn with because you can simply end turn on a Mega, pass it over to your opponent, and then we are able to save our Spirit Links for future Rayquazas. We still play two Floatstone, even though we have Guzma, uh, because we're trying to hit the combo, and we have a lot of chunky things on the bench. If we lead anything but Ray or Coco, we're going to need to float out of there uh, ASAP. Uh, Dragonite has a three retreat cost, that's the bulkiest thing in the deck, but we also have Orangaru, Hooper, uh, Pseudo Wudo, all with a two retreat cost, so... All these things are awkward, we're going to have to float ourselves out of there. Then we have lots of different supporters in one or two counts. So, one of Skylar, again, as I mentioned, it's a combo deck. We've got to find the pieces. Oftentimes Skylar can help you get Ultra Ball if, you're, if it's literally like your first action. Or if you've already got Ultra Ball Hooper, started getting the cycle going, you can Skylar for the extra piece that you need. The Skyfield, the Link, the Mega Turbo, whatever it is. Skylar can be that final card to get you there, which is very cool. 
one N, as I've mentioned, we are very aggressive, so we don't want to be Ning the opponents uh, because typically our hand size will um, reduce. Uh, but it's still not a bad card on turn one, and there'll be close games where you do need to end the opponent out of certain things if they have started to take plenty of prizes against you. Uh, we are playing one Hex Maniac, obviously a great card in the format. We can Hex Volcanium players, so they are unable to one-shot Mega Rayquaza. Uh, even with a Ho-Oh choice ban, they can't do that, uh, so the Hex is going to be important. Also for, of course, Decidueye decks, um, Vika Volt Tapu Bulu decks, Metagross decks, uh, even to an extent things like Ninetales stopping their artillery could be important. So all sorts of things Hex can cover, and being able to do so is going to be great. Even actually the um, Gyarados decks, so you can actually get the flying flips off, even if they play Mr. Mime or Machoke. So... A pretty important one-off copy. Then we are playing one Lysander because we now have Guzma. I believe he is the superior card to have in the deck. So we're going to have the option to play both, but the lower count of Lysander because he has been upgraded to the two count of Guzma. We are an aggressive deck. I keep saying the same thing. Uh, Rayquaza is very simplistic in what it tries to do. It has lots of fancy tricks with all these abilities and things, but at the end of the day, we're going for one-shots and we want to make sure we can hit the target um, that is a two prize target most of the time, and also the biggest threat on the opponent's board. So having two Guzma, one Lysander, we can often access the correct card for the matchup. And uh, I'm happy enough with Guza, uh, Guzma because we have two Float and Tapu Coco that we can rarely um, hurt ourselves by having it. And at the same time, we vastly improve our um, item lock matchups because oftentimes the CGI Vileplume will attempt to go for a stall approach against us uh, but now we have two supporter outs in order to move our active Pokemon if it's not a Rayquaza. Uh, additionally if it's turn two and we started something that we couldn't move out we could just Guzma something up as well so that's another means of switching so we now have more switching than we used to in Rayquaza and these are also much faster cards than previously the Olympia game uh, having the one slot. So a slight upgrade for Ray there. Um, potentially you could go for a 2-1 split the other way around if you much prefer Lysander. But because of the Coco, it just works a little bit nicer with Guzma, I feel. Um, then we have two Mallow. Um, very cool for the combo. It's a big part of the deck. It stops us having to spam items and draw heavy with Shaman. We can just use like one Shaman or two Shaman or whatever, and the Mallow will stack the deck in order to get these pieces to fulfill our turn, basically. Very good card, and works, of course, with Unknown as well as Shaman. Even Oranguru if your hand is very low. And uh, then we have the two Professor Sycamore, discard, draw seven, still going to be hyper-aggressive, still going to be a good card. I think I actually missed out Skyfield, but I've mentioned it so often. It allows us to have the eight bench, obviously integral for Ray, so it's going to be a four count. And then it's just the energy, the 4 DC, the 4 metal, pretty much all we need. I've considered going to 5 metal just to improve our outs of getting like energy in hand to discard. It can sometimes improve your turn 1 potential to have a 5th energy, but it is kind of clunky at the same time. Not a speed card, so that's why we've not gone for that. There's a few interesting omissions from this deck, cards that I'm not playing, and uh, I'll discuss why we're not playing any of these. Field Blower is the first one that jumps to mind. We are... Very ability focused with Hooper, Shaman, um, Unown, Dragonite, all these things. Why are we not playing Field Blower? Because a Garbodor will shut us down. Uh, the idea is we can just out hit them basically. <laughs> uh, because we um, don't really need abilities after turn one, in theory. In theory, we've done our nonsense on the first turn. And unless someone randomly just plays like Wally Garb, which no one does. Um, you're going to be able to get your turn one cycle and when you're able to do that your board is developed you can take the one shots and you don't really care and when we have two guzma one lysander we can quite comfortably deal with the garbador more permanently than just getting rid of a float uh yeah yeah their float stone so we can take the prize on them quite effectively and just carry on from there because trampa garb when we're playing as few items as we are and the build that we are where it's not sycamore focused it's much more mallow focused we naturally don't discard many items, so we're never worried about Trash Lanch getting one-hit KOs, and Drampa physically can't one-hit KO, so we have the time to just deal with Garbodors here and there. So, yeah, we don't really need the Field Blowers to that extent. It could be a card you want to play, maybe you could cut an Unknown or like Sudowoodo or something. Those would be the first things I'd look to cut, 
to put field blowers in, but they're slow cards, and I like being speedy and aggressive, uh, because that's just the name of the game, really. Another card that I could consider in here is Acer Roller, another new supporter from Burning Shadows. If you're getting damage, you can just pick everything back up and spam it all back down. Rayquaza is tanky. The main reason I'm not doing this is because other decks play Field Blower, they get rid of our links, and it's difficult for us to replay the Ray, even though it has that awesome ability. So bear that in mind, it's pretty cool. It can pick up things like Dragonite as well to get us more draw, but uh, it's a little bit cute for my liking. Um, what's the other card that I was considering? Oh yeah, Puzzle of Time is a deck, is a card that's often been in this deck um, because you're able to spam things, get important resources back like Mega Turbos, uh, DCs, supporters even at times, Spirit Links. It just fills the gaps. Uh, the main reason we're not playing this now is, like I said, we're more Mallow focused than we are Sycamore focused, so we don't actually dump as many things as we used to. Another consideration card is Special Charge in order to recover um, Double Colorless. It is the lifeblood of the deck. Um, there are ways that people can discard energy from us, even though we do have Magina, that can still be shut off by Garbodor, and they can do things like Righteous Edge. But typically, um, we can get through the game without it. It's up to you how aggressive you want to go with your Ray. You can play Special Charge just to basically give yourself better end proofing. Uh, but again, it's one of these cards that you can draw at the wrong time. It can be janky in the hand. It can slow down basically all your shamans. Uh, so that's the main reason why we're not going for that. But yeah, that is going to be it. That is the list. And uh, I've been talking for a long time. Ray is actually a deck that spends... <laughs> I need to spend a long time talking about it because I've played so many weird abilities and stuff. And a few interesting decisions along the way. But enough of that nonsense. Let's get into the games and see Ray in action. Um, I've talked about all the complexities of Ray, but really, it's about drawing lots, hitting hard, and winning the game in a few turns. That's what we know Ray for, pretty much. That's the hallmark of a Ray. Okay. The game is not loading very well here. Oh my goodness, I've just realised that I haven't changed the fact file. Huh. Okay. Well. That is awkward. That is really awkward. Okay. We are going to have to uh, change this. This is professionalism at its, at its best, isn't it? Okay, let's have a look at this mulligan. Looks like we're up against Desi Tails. This is a pretty easy matchup. If they're not playing item lock, it's pretty easy for us just to stampede them. Okay, let's draw some cards from the mulligan. Getting a Hooper is intensely good. And uh, let's uh, continue to fix my thing on the side here. Okay, speed, tanking, weaknesses, uh, EX focused. Ability Reliant. Yeah. Well, that is awkward. I feel silly. Oh, no one reads that anyway, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's not even fitting on the page very well. Oh, dear. What's going on? There we go. Okay, we can actually play out this turn. We got end, didn't we? Rip. End out of the dream, basically. They only have a Vulpix. We are going to go for the dream. We already have Floatstone to move. That is a big part. We can only draw three cards with Shaman here. But we can draw an additional one with Unown in a moment. We get ourselves a full Rayquaza. We have more than one draw because we have Dragonite. So we have two draws here to keep us cycling. We get ourselves a double colorless energy, which is good indeed. If we don't get the piece off of this unknown, we will commit the double colorless to Shaman and just uh, Sky Return. But we get a Ranguru. Oh man, okay. A Ranguru for one or just Sky Return? What can a Ranguru get me? What can this one card be? It could be like 
Hoopa, Ultra Ball, Shaman. Uh, lots of things. Lots of things. It could also be none of those things and be really bad for us. Now, you will want to see me be hyper-aggressive here, but I'm going to be defensive. We'll draw one card from Instruct. Rip. Should have risked it. Okay. Okay. Rip us. Well, we wouldn't have got the combo, so it's fine. It's fine. We're halfway there, right? Man, what an ugly hand this is. Let's see if they've been able to draw out of this, or are they just going to be done here? Okay, they have a Lele. We have a game, guys. Should have believed in the heart of the cards. Oh well. It could easily have been many duds in the deck. There is the Lele for a Sycamore. Maybe Bridget is prized or maybe they feel it's too slow at this point. Maybe they want to get some energy attachments on board to start tackling our big old Ray, Ray Quasar. Apparently the re the correct way to pronounce it is Ray Quasar, but I'm so used to saying Ray Quasar, so sorry if I keep flirting between the two. Can't help it. Well, I can, but you know. So they're going to go for a Coco. Coco is actually quite an efficient attacker in the matchup. It, of course, does hit for weakness. If he has Choice Band, he could do 100 to a Ray and also start setting up Shaman EXs, which is dangerous because of the amount of uh, pings they can have with Feather Arrows. They basically only need to deal with one Rayquaza, and then they can ping Shamans for the rest of the game. Oh my goodness, they play Necrozma GX. This is a problem for this deck for certain. We are unable to attack Necrozma because of its ability Light's End. So essentially, they are able to spread 100 to all of our dudes. And this is very bad for Ray because um, they simply then can do things like Flying Flip and um, Feather Arrows to end the game by dealing with multiple Shamans. So we have to be very wary at this point of what the opponent is going to be doing. Because of this, it might be just a Sky Return play here. Um, we could... I think I want a Mallow. I could DCE, Mallow, get an Ultra Ball, get rid of some of these Metal Energy next turn. And start trying to pop off with the GX, uh, sorry, with the Emerald Break. Taking a prize is good. It's pressure. I like it. Basically forced him to have an N in his four card hand. We know two of them are Rowlets, so it may well not be. Let's Mallow. I want to get Ultra Ball, and the second card doesn't matter because uh, we'll Ultra Ball. And I'm happy enough to Sky Return into Rayquaza here. Pretty sure. This way his Necrozma isn't really in a great spot. Because sure he could do it. It does deal a lot of damage to two guys. But it's not like winning him the game. Like it would be on Shaman EXs. He's going to go into his Coco. Got free retreat. But he could also attack with it this turn. If he finds something like Choice Band. Oh we ended up getting... Ultra Ball off the prizes anyway. What a shame. Our hand is crazy. He must end us here if he can. Debating their trainer's mail here it seems.
We're going to rescue stretcher. Get it back. Maybe just darter it, so maybe he puts it all in. Yeah, he's going to put it all back in. Is this an N or, a sh or an... Oh, it is an N. That's a shame. <laughs> Could easily have been a sycamore. It's a hard N as well, so it's his third N. He was much more likely to have a sycamore there. You can actually get a much cleaner hand. We'll take this. There's a Dartrix. There's an Ultra Ball. Does he have energy to attach this turn? He's going to grab himself a Shaman X. Looks like he's going to try digging for it. So the aim of the game for us is going to be to deal with a Lele or a Shaman without putting down any Leles of Shamans of our own. Or well, Shamans, definitely. Shaman is basically game losing for us because of Necrozma. We can't Lysander KO Necrozma because of his ability, so we need it to come into the active. And by the time it's come active, he's already used his GX attack to do his dirty business. So. They are going to DC the Coco this turn. They're going to find themselves a Decidueye as well. I imagine they'll just ping the active and do a flip. Very unfortunate they have the end. Let's see what we can do with our turn though. We'll get rid of the metal because we need that for certain. Um, there's no way that I can deal with the Necrozma. Like, setting up McGinn is definitely not the right way to do this. Um, we will grab Lele for Mallow, I guess. We can Lele. So I need to do this first. We just want to grab one. We can't afford to put down more. And we don't have the bench space either. Then we will wonder tag. We'll grab Mallow. This Necrozma is going to get crazy value. So we just go DCE plus uh, thingamajig. Uh, Mega Turbo. Having to use a shaman, gulp, pray for Joe. We do manage to emerald break the Coco. Squaring up the, well, putting ourselves to an even prize trade is good because he has to give us two with Necrozma. So it's gonna be hexing Necrozma for KO and then Lysandering for a KO. And he needs to get quite a few pings down in order to outrace us here. He's gonna VS Seeker, likely for N, I would imagine. Unless he feels he needs to dig hard for double colorless. Yeah, he's gonna go Sycamore. He's already got two DC in the bin. It's probably the main reason for this. If he can't find DC here, we could be in great shape. There's the double colorless. I wonder if he'll try and take the Shaman prize now with the Feather Arrow. If he does, it gives us a bench space. If he doesn't, I guess it goes active. But it feels slow going on active. He may need to take prizes based on his hand. <clears throat> to 
Sigui Coco Crosmo was something I was testing on stream earlier, earlier in the week on Wednesday. It's a pretty cool concept. Don't know if it can beat Vault enough, but seeing that amount of damage come on the board is just so fun. We can only lower our hand size by exactly... We can only get one Orangaroo draw here, which is awkward. Because we can't deal with the Necrozma in the active. So, could potentially have Sky Return there, maybe that was a better line. So we do this, hope to get a supporter. What a dream. Okay. We can retreat Ray, I guess. He's not doing us much good in the active. We can start pressuring with this guy. We have the Mega Turbo if I want to play it, but we only have 40 HP remaining. So I guess we'll just try and two-shot this Necrozma. We could potentially lose this turn, for sure. He could DCE Lele, his last DCE does 80. Then he could, actually he's just a DCE away from game. Hmm. Scary times. Yeah, maybe Lele was wrong. It should have been Shaman. It was very optimistic of me, but I think we we're just running out of turns. Wait, wait, wait. Yeah, he has to get... He can't win this turn. I'm wrong. I was looking at my own four prizes. He can come very close to winning this turn. <laughs> he can deal with Ray now. He can deal with Ray, and if he has DC, he can also deal with Lele. Which would be obviously terrible. And we'd be forced to Sky Return. Let's see if he's able to get double colourless. If he's not, he will retreat into Vulpix, I would imagine. It's going to be an Ultra Ball. Maybe he's trying to thin as much as possible here. Yeah, I'm going to get rid of Espeon in a forest. Not going to be impactful at this point. Going to grab themselves a Tapu Lele. Knowing that we likely need Skyfield. So, pretty smart. He's also able to train his mail. Just get rid of it. Trying to burn as many cards as possible. He's going to Prismatic Burst for the 70. Because he plays Rainbows. I completely forgot that this has a second attack. In my list, I don't play rainbows. Hmm, that's scary. Whoops. Okay, down to two prizes. At least we have space. We have space to do things now. We have space to get creative. Skyfield is definitely space. Uh, our hand is really bad though. Oh no. <laughs> the animation's so weird because we can't do damage to the guy. The Necrozma. So he's got us on a clock here for sure. If he has uh, another DC Coco, he could win the game. Guzma is also potentially game if he can find a rainbow or a double colorless. There's another DC, so he can't, he can only Prismatic Burst for 10. Okay, he's just trying to, he also forgot to ping. Huh. Do you think he had game? Maybe. 
He had game. He should have DC'd Lele. He had pings. Ugh, confused.com. That moment when they had game and throw game. So, we have commit our float stone. We have one more. We need to get very lucky off N. Exceedingly lucky. We can't take prizes this turn. We got Ultra Ball, so that's pretty pretty much something. We don't have Hooper. Do we have Hooper in the discard pile? Yeah, okay. Dragonite it is. Let's start doing the stuff we're good at. I think we just do this, right? Oh, maybe it should have been a... Uh... No, this is still fine. I was thinking maybe we could have gone unknown, but... Because we already had a ray in deck, but getting two shamans is still pretty much preferable here. Need to hit Spirit Link. Actually, no, we don't, because we don't attack this turn anyway. So we can end on this. I need to be... Wait, he just has game, right? He can, yeah, we don't have floatstone, so we can draw one card for exactly floatstone to not lose. Can't get any more cards from this hand. Exactly floatstone or bust? Not floatstone. Okay, he may not have seen game last turn, but we did, so we'll concede. So that's one guy who's teching for Ray. Fair play to him. And one of the question marks is, how many people will tech against Ray? Um, the opponent was playing Deathly Tales, but managed to fit in a Coco and a Necrozma GX. Potentially that clunks out their deck a little bit. And also you have to ask the question, is Deathly Tales good enough against other decks like Volcanion? Um, the Nine Tails part of Deathly Tales used to be very good against Volk. But now, more and more often, we're seeing Volcanians play one Ho-Oh uh, GX. Ho-Oh with a choice band can one-shot Ninetales very effectively. And at the same time, doesn't have weakness to water. So, it's much better than it used to be against Desi Tails. So, I would hedge my bets that you're more likely to face Desi Plume than Desi Tails at Worlds. But that might be incorrect from me. That could just be an arrogant assumption. Let's read on. We see a Marshadow in the active. I am confused. Marshadow can copy all sorts of things. And all sorts of things are worrying. I'm going to grab him again. Because he could be playing like Jolteon stuff. So having um, a basic and an evolved Pokemon gets around like... Jolteon, Glaceon stuff. At the same time, I could just uh, grab another Ray here. We can always get Lele to attack with, so we can just do this instead. Burn the other Spirit Link out of my hand. Oh my good. I was so scared there because <laughs> the animation, like, sort of jumped a little bit. Okay, so we can do this. We can just do this. Grab Tapu Lele. Lele can get us Mallow. And you can see how strong this combo is at this point. We'll grab ourselves DC and Mega Turbo. And we will go for it. Now 
Now, the rest of the hand is pretty dead, so do I even commit DC act, uh, to bench? It may once again have to be a sky return play. I don't want to commit it active just in case he has like Drampa available to him. So we'll just pass. It's again conservative on my part. Ray not notorious for being conservative, but we sort of have to at this point. Let's see an ultra ball. Oh, it's Turbo Dark, right? Okay. I was thinking, like, because I've tested a Marshallow Boxy thing, I thought it could have been, like, Marshallow Varplume with all sorts. But, don't worry, guys. It's just a typical old gar uh, Darkrai deck. Darkrai used to main Sudowoodo in most of its lists. I wonder if that will be the case with this opponent. They have had to make spaces for the GX, and sometimes that is the sacrifice they have to make. I would imagine as well the Marshallow takes up space. So they're going to Sycamore. They have one GX already in the bin that they can pull out if they want to. Gonna see a field blower from them. Bit annoying. See an EXP share get attached. There's the dark energy. There's nothing he can copy because he's gonna use restoration. And he's just gonna pass. And we are just going to Sky Return, because we have nothing else. And we're going to Ray. Seems fine. Not ideal. This way, though, we get more draw. And we actually get rolling again. It was the bait to the Mallow maybe getting me Skyfield because we were filling our bench to five. Uh, but I felt like we had decent odds, at least getting like a supporter. <laughs> None of that though. None of that noise. They're gonna find themselves a Yveltal and they're just gonna grab Sycamore again. They've managed to get another Darkrai into the discard. They also put a Darkrai EX in the discard so they can copy it with Marshadow this turn. We do have resistance, which helps us out a little bit here. They play Wishful Baton, and we don't play Field Blower. That is so ugly. Such a greedy card, Wishful Baton. We're pretty much like the only deck in format that doesn't play Blower. Maybe like Vespi. But that, in that deck, it doesn't matter. But yeah, he's going to get some intense value from Wishful Baton. In a metagame without Field Blower, this card is insane. And this opponent is going to reap the rewards of us not having blower. They play Sophocles. Crazy. Crazy old list. Here's a restoration. So it's gonna get smacked for 80. Good thing about Wishful Baton is it's not a choice band. So we might be able to tank again next turn. So obviously we DCE. I'm going to Ultra Ball first. Get rid of some cards in this hand. We've got to search some stuff. I've got to make sure we have another Spirit Link. Okay, we do. We can just grab an Unknown and just draw more cards here. There's Skyfield, very good news. <sighs> okay. There is the Rayquaza Spirit Link that we're after. And another energy into the discard pile, which is great news as well. Don't really want to be discarding Okay, we can discard the Shaman and then Hooper it back. That's fine. Uh, sorry, Dragonite it back. Will Mega. And we'll Dragonite. We'll pull up 
these guys. Do we just hold this hand? This hand is like amazing. Yeah, dig the mega turtle. I guess is the thing we look for. Punished if he hexes and responds, but that seems like a lot from a three card hand. Yeah, this seems fine. Not gonna commit floatstone because it can only really hurt us. Boom. It's a lot of damage, but he has the wishful baton, so that energy ain't going nowhere. Going to one to Lele, one to Darkrai, I imagine. Does it spread anywhere? Oh, to one of the bench. Wait, is PTCG I got it wrong? I need to read this card again. Out of the way. I need to read this card. To one of your opponent's bench Pokemon. Oh, I see. He activated EXP share and then Baton activated afterwards. Interesting that he went that way around. Does he have a replacement stadium? Big question here. No. And he's 10 short of getting the knockout. That's good news for us, right? We're going to Mega Turbo the bench. I feel comfortable enough attaching a metal to the bench as well. Because we have the other Mega Turbo in hand, we could let this get knocked out. Then we can Turbo again. Uh, do I need to do anything else, really? I don't think so. Uh, at this point, we can start end proofing ourselves. Unone is kind of end proofing, but also putting Orangaroo down is end proofing. I will upgrade my end proofing mechanism. Guzma is not helpful, but we can hold him for sure. Uh, we'll just ammo break. And that's another two prizes. Some nice prizes as well. There's some helpful ones. There's actually a lot of decision making with Ray. It's an interesting, it's like more fun than I thought it would be. It gets a bad reputation for just being mind numbingly easy to play, but it's actually not mind numbing. Okay. A stadium has been replaced. So I guess we just keep the Lele. Basically keep all of our options open. And they're gonna throw an end our way. So glad I upgraded the end proofing mechanism. They're getting a bunch of energy on the board. I'm surprised they didn't try and attack with an Oblivion Wing. Oblivion Wing was definitely the right answer there. They 100% should have gone Oblivion Wing to try and skew the prize trade, because I just win by finding a lot less now. Can Skyler get me game? Skyler can get me Mega Turbo. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15. No, sorry. 3, 6, 9, 12. Skyler could also get me Sky Field. I think we just play N. Okay, one card that we can burn is a good thing. Uh, two draws. Skyfield Shaman. Skyfield is something. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-one. 
If I believe he plays only Fury Belt, I could realistically go Ray here to protect ourselves from two prizes. I could additionally retreat to Orangaroo. Yeah, let's go Orangaroo. Once again, getting end. Frustrating. Nice. That's pretty jammy. Oh, we only have Mallow in here. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. Keeping Orangaroo maybe was the answer there. Maybe just sacking the two prizes. Oh. Maybe we still win. Gotta get pretty lucky now. I didn't get lucky. Well, 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 19. Looks like we're passing. Plus no Guzma energy. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18. Twenty twenty one. Oh, we have 22. Okay. So, because my energy wasn't enough. Okay, we have a big cycle turn. Let's see if we can cycle to the KO. It's going to be close. DC is not a helpful card. We can burn it. I guess. It doesn't impact the game. We can take a more. These are all good cards. These are all cards we can't play. Dragonite is reload. Uh, we'll take Shaman and Hooper. Can Hooper get as many more Pokemon? I should have looked harder when I took my Dragonite from that Ultra Ball. I think he can, right? He's the best option still. Fifteen, eighteen. Three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, eighteen, two, ten. Two forty. Wow, clutched it. Clutched it. That was pretty lucky. Man. He got pretty close. He got really close, actually. We'll take it. We'll take it. And we'll have one more game with Ray. <clears throat> Both games have had to be Sky returning. <laughs> but, uh... Helped us create that one, at least. Looks like we might be up against another Decidueye. Is this the same guy? I can't remember. If it is, that's going to be a bit of a joke. I need to play around a Cosma twice in one video. Wasn't able to play around it well the first time. <laughs> well, there's Rowlet. If it is the same guy, I'll just uh, say you have a good deck and then we'll just go. So there's not much educational value in us trying to play against someone heavily tech for us twice. We'll just try and find a new matchup. Also gets a bit stale. Alternatively, this could be another person and we'll just play the game.
But if this opening Ultra Ball just goes ahead and grabs Necrozma, I'll be pretty sad. Not that we can't beat Necrozma, but it is very difficult to beat. Yeah, it's the same guy. We'll just... Uh... No offence to him. Like, fair enough, he knows how to beat Ray. <laughs> he's he's taken for it, at least. Uh, we'll just get another matchup. I don't think it's worth us scratching our head over it again. He has revealed my secret tech, though, which is a bit annoying. He knows the ways. Maybe he's a viewer. Hello if you are. Well done to you. Uh, okay. Three Mega Turbo opening hand. Going first, so the Spirit Link is fine to go. Still have two more. Alrighty, let's get moving. Good old Ray Double Shea combo. Two cards. We just want an energy attachment, really. Okay, that is excellent. That is that thing that I wanted. Uh, we could just end on Mega here and have four draws next turn. I don't hate it. Let's do that. We could have unknown just to play around delinquent slightly better, but we already get blown out heavily by delinquent. Ooh, it's an Umbreon. Umbreon Zoro? Or Umbreon Hammers? I don't know which is worse. Both sound pretty grim. Umbreon Decidui. Ugh, more big birds, huh? Flappy birds. There's a field blow up. Tapu Lele coming in. Gonna grab themselves a sycamore. And they're gonna use it. Trainer's mail for forest. Let's see this start cheating its way up. Getting into the higher stages. What a cheeky fella. Yep. There's Dark Tricks and no, just around it. Baited. There could be still some shamans to come, who knows? So we have Floatstone. Another Floatstone, this looks like a shaman. Nope, just a strafe. Alrighty. Imagine. Oh, he stays active. Huh. Stayed active. Interesting. Let's draw three cards. Let's draw one card. <laughs> oh dear. Okay. Okay. Uh, I want to keep this a sky return. If I go one, two, three, 
I still have too many cards in hand for Orangaroo. I do want to set up Orangaroo for sure. If I attach another DCE though, he could just uh, Dark Call, and that would be obviously terrible. So it might just be a Hex Pass here. I could DCE Pay Retreat. Dark Call still sounds ugly. I think it's Hex Pass. It's not a nice position to be in. Okay, they just have Sycamore. That's fine. They attach DC active. He could do me a huge favor and take a KO this turn. I doubt he will. But you never know. He's playing a crazy deck. Maybe he's just a crazy guy. Setting up Shaman Math is important, actually. The 30 could be useful for him. He made GX just one energy for the value. Oh, he's going to attack. Incredible. He's done us a favor. I mean, a hand still sucks, but hey. That doesn't actually help as much as it looked like it would. Should have promoted Shaman. Don't know what I'm doing. I just want to burn cards from my hand so I can maybe Orangaroo draw. Let's hit him. Potentially again, Sky Return was a better answer than doing this. This gives him a long time to just hit me. He has two options now. He could Dark Call GX, just set me down, or he just start pounding me and start attaching to like Lele and actually get through the ray. It's a difficult call for him. Because although taking off, you know, four energy sounds great, I could just replace it all in theory. Ooh, he's end us. Incredible. Okay. Yeah, he's just going to go for that approach. Ooh, that's a very nicely timed Ultra Ball. Skillfully timed, I'd like to say. But we've not played very skillfully this game. This is always happening. I think this is actually the discard, if anything. Yeah. This is the discard for a Hooper. Just kidding, we don't have Hooper. Oh boy. Well that makes this more awkward, doesn't it? Oh Joe, knowing your prizes is such a thing you should be doing. Deary me. Okay. So, we mallow, we grab DC, and we grab uh, I think it's just Dragonite, right?
you get the instruct value for an extra card. We'll dragonite these. I will overbench and draw the rest. There's a consideration to like not benching everything all at once. It's definitely a real consideration. Coming the floatstone doesn't sound great. Then again, N is a likely option for him. They've already played one field blower. Let's just do it and smack him. Big damage. There's that prize Hoopa we we're on about. So, the situation comes up. We need this DC to last. Mm. Okay. Two, three, four, five, six. So this one goes. Here comes Tapu Lele. Olivia, my goodness, this is a wild list. But he's got two decidueyes from it, so. Sure, can't argue. Can't argue with that, can you? Perfect in that situation, I guess. Why didn't I put Olivia in my uh, list of things that changes from Burning Shadows? I've misplayed. So, does he pile it in all on the active? 90 plus 60. Seems smart. He could start targeting the Shaman. We'll have to see. This unknown Mallow combo is going to be nuts, by the way. It's going to be phenomenal. It's going to be like my favorite thing of all time. For some reason, he's going for Dragonite. This is suspect to me. I don't understand why. I know in theory, we can Sky Return a Shaman off the board. But if I'm ever Sky Returning, he gains more damage than we take off. A lot of the time because he can attack and do pings so it's kind of flawed logic for him to deal with something with more HP so Mallow OP so we will grab Stifield obviously Because uh, then we can Dragonite back Shamans. So our second card should be uh, Spirit Link, I believe. I want to get that developed. Attach Spirit Link. And then I can Hooper for the Mega. Yeah. Give me that Skyfield. Get on the board. Give me that Dragonite. Give me the, that uh, unknown back. What a beastly unknown this is. Draw two of your favorite cards from the deck. Yes, please. 
There's the link. There's the attachment. And we can reset our top decks now. I think these are fine. I don't think we have any spirit links left, so we'll never try and get the other ray. Happily play this. Happily play this, of course. And do I need to draw more cards or do I hold? Uh, see, this is the part where I don't know how to play Array. This is, it's literally at this point where I'm like, don't need to dig for anything else. But when the stadium goes, this is dead in the hand anyway, unless I have it plus stadium. Actually, that's not true. This, is, this should definitely be held because this can get knocked out and then I free up a bench space for myself. Okay. I figured out the answer. 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 2, 10. Yeah. I worked it out, guys. I worked it out. Okay. Good news, everyone. We figured it out. So, there are five prizes. I still feel fairly safe here, even though the Rayquaza is always going down. Oh, he's sycamored. It's got to be game over if he sycamores. He had the choice to end and he's still sycamored. This man has made some interesting lines, that's for certain. Okay, they're going to feel blower at least. Field blower is actually really not great for him because I just undo the damage that he was doing as well. Whoops. There's another Rowlet. I wonder if now he'll put the three pings on Shaman. I guess in theory he could put three on Orangaroo as well, because he needs to take an odd prize anyway, and Orangaroo isn't going to jump off the board with a Sky Return ever. I would like to see him put it on Orangaroo or my other Rayquaza. These are the two options I would most prefer. But I think it has to be Orangaroo really. I think he has to hedge his bets. Okay, the Shaman's actually reasonable as well. Shaman and Orangaroo are both reasonable at this point. He just has to pray that I don't have it all. And currently we don't. Another EV gets benched. There's an energy drive. So we can definitely attack. Just so far we're doing 150. And let's see if we can make any advance on that. So we do this. We want an Ultra Ball here. Can I do like a Mallow thing and get the KO? I think I could, right? I could Ultra Ball Lele for Mallow for game. Get one card from Orangaroo. I think this gets me game. Lele for Mallow for Skyfield. Yep. Skyfield plus whatever, a Pokemon, I guess. Guru coming in clutch with the instruct for game. Lovely instructions, Orangaroo. First class as always. And uh, we'll go for the overkill. Why not? He's going to let us get away with it as well. What a good sport. Big damage. Okay. So we're able to overcome a Decidueye. I know it was an Umbreon. But think of it, if it wasn't... if it Umbreon was actually more awkward than if it was like a Ninetales or something. So you could see that... Um, Against a regular Decidueye that isn't playing the Necrozma, it's pretty much quite a good matchup. There's still headaches along the way, um, but 
if they are playing the Coco Crosma thing, which I would like to say I pioneered. <laughs> Maybe I didn't. Maybe everyone saw the lines, but it's definitely something I've put on the channel before. So if you want to check my world's testing, you can have a look at that list and stuff. But yeah, that's one way that Decidueye can beat Ray. But if they're not playing that, and the Plume build can't really fit in a Crosma and Coco and stuff because they can't draw into it very well. So I wouldn't be too scared of playing Ray just because of some Necrozmas here and there in some Decidueye lists. Because also, from my testing from playing straight Decidueye, even with Necrozma, you don't beat Volk enough. So I've gone off the deck personally, and maybe others will as well. So yeah, don't stress Ray players. I think there'll only be a handful of people playing Pseudo Wudo, and if you're going into day one, you can take two losses regardless. And uh, pretty much shake the opponent's hand if they have the techs and the answers or the favourable matchups. There aren't many that naturally have a favourable against Ray, so there's plenty of reason to play this archetype. Uh, so yeah, please leave a like to this video if you did. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Uh, for now though, it has been Joe from Omnipoke, and I'll be seeing you guys at Worlds very soon. Cheers.